Hi there. In a previous video, we all discussed how data sufficiency has now changed its face as it's a part of GMAT Focus Edition, how it has evolved. And this video, we're going to continue and discuss this new type of data sufficiency, especially in the verbal reasoning type of questions, and see how you should be solving these questions. So first, a quick recap of what we discussed previously, otherwise the detailed video is also linked up for you. So we saw that the DS questions have overall evolved how that pure context questions are out now. We will not have algebra, number property, context questions anymore. What will stay is only the real world context questions. So really word problem type of questions. And the new addition here that, that was never there is these questions, the verbal reasoning questions in data sufficiency format. In the current version of the GMAT, the old version, there is no linkage between verbal and data sufficiency. Data sufficiency was completely a part of quant, but not anymore. Now, within verbal, there are two types of questions. One, pure verbal reasoning. There are no numbers here. And second, there is verbal reasoning, but with some quant processing also involved. Now, we discussed in detail some question types here, two examples really. This is one example of a pure verbal reasoning question. You can see there are no numbers here, while this is an example where you do have numbers, you know, your percentage or your hundred books and so on. Now, between these two types, we have discussed the verbal reasoning type this couple question in another video linked up for you this video we are going to discuss this question the library question which has some quant processing in it okay so let's get started let's only and only focus on this question where remember the process to solve these questions always stays the same this was discussed in detail in that video but here a quick recap again first step is for you to own the data set what does that mean you understand the data set really really well imagine yourself to be the person or the situation talked about in the question. Just immerse yourself in it. When you do this properly, you will be able to visualize the approach to solve the question. What is it that you really want to do? That approach should be clear in your head before you even read the statements of the data sufficiency question. So till here, we are only with the stem of the question, the text that comes before the statements. And then once you have this very clear approach, you will go into the statements one by one using your data sufficiency framework for solutions and this is where you finally just execute the approach okay this is exactly what i'm going to follow for our question let's just see the question one more time here it is if you want to take a shot at it pause the video and try it none I hope you tried. Now, our first step here is to own the data set. And what do we mean by that? Reading the entire passage very, very carefully, slowly, so that we understand every piece of information given. We will not just be reading on the surface, we will be reading to comprehend what's happening, okay? So with that, let's try and read this. And only and only let's focus on the question text here. I will remove the statements for us. All right, here we go. So a small library has books on 20 different subjects, including most prominently history. So I'm not going to just read forward. I will first understand what this part is saying. There are inferences you can draw. So the library has books on 20 subjects. These, these could be any subject, history, geography, literature, whatever. But then it says most prominently it's history. What does that mean for us? It means that from among these 20 subjects, history has the most representation in the library, which means if I look at the maximum books are from which one subject, then they should be from history. That's what this part means. So keep drawing inferences as you read a question. Keep assimilating everything that you read. Don't collect things for the end. This way, when you assimilate information, you will never have to come back to the passage. You will only make forward movement and save precious time. Okay, let's read further. One afternoon, so okay, we're talking about a specific afternoon, a librarian arbitrarily picks up 100 books for reshelving from among the books returned 
that day okay so it's not that i'm talking about all of the books from the library i'm taking them out and then reshelving no there were these books that were returned that particular day let me just represent that day by day t and then there were a lot of books that came back i don't know how many um you know 100 or 200 or 500 or 1000 whatever be the number out of all of these books the librarian picks up 100 and these 100 will be put back on the shelves okay this is the situation all the books returned that day which means you know this little box that i uh, drew this is for all of the returned books on day t remember so all the books returned that day were borrowed during the past 3 weeks okay so this one actually tells me more information about these returned books about when were they even borrowed in the first place so the borrowing according to this happened in the past 3 weeks so if you look at this past 3 week period this is where the borrowing had happened for these books and now on this particular day day t they were returned okay now finally there's a question that they're asking let's read this it says are fewer than 20% of the books the librarian picks up on history hmm so librarian picks up 100 books and we are saying are less than 20% of those 100 less than 20% of 100 means less than 20 no so are this entire part i can really say are less than 20 books on history from the 100 that i picked up here now this is how we first understood the data set completely everything given to us we now completely understand a quick test for that is close your eyes and see if you can explain the situation to yourself you should be able to talk about the entire situation obviously the exact words used they do not matter but the entire context should be very very clear in your head now see how owning the data set truly understanding it came with note taking this is an ability that you have to develop it's a very very important skill set and good note taking means that you never have to read the passage again now i'm not just going to jump into solving and you know going into the statements we will first visualize the approach to solve this this was your step one now we've brought the notes here let me put that here perfect here and now what's your next step once you own the data set next step is to visualize the approach as i said you will not jump into the statement straight away you will first build an approach to understand what exactly do you want to look for in your statements so we will come back here and use all of the information we had here so visualizing the approach is a natural next step of owning the data set and unless you own it this way you will not be able to visualize so let's think what is the question really asking again are fewer than 20 books because it was out of 100 are fewer than 20 books picked that the librarian picked up on history that means if i look at these 100 books that were picked up i want to see is history number of history books basically less than 20 simple this is how i can represent my situation this is not from the entire library this is out of the 100 that the librarian picked up out of 100 picked up this is what i ultimately need to find out and so essentially the approach for me will be to see if there's a way to find out that from the 100 books picked up how many were picked up for history if this number here is less than 20 then the answer to my question is a yes but if this number is greater than 20 or equal to 20 then the answer to my question is no so either i find information directly about history or maybe i find out information about the non history books i will still be able to subtract that from 100 to get my history contribution so this is what we need to try to find out from the statements this is how we visualize the approach perfect and now it's time for the final step execute the approach so as i analyze my statements i will keep that visualization in front of me okay so here we have everything we'll come back to the notes if needed for now we will focus only on the statement and on this approach that we visualized let's read the statement now it says fewer than 20% of the books in the library are on history 
Hmm. This is talking about all of the books in the library. So it's not just the 100 book set that was picked up from the ones returned today. It's not talking about this. Instead, it's talking about the entire library and saying that less than 20% of the books are history. Now, whatever is happening in the entire library, does that give me the exact number from these 100 that were returned that particular day? Not at all. I have no idea how many history books were borrowed and therefore returned. I do not have sufficient information. And therefore, if I look at my choices, since statement 1 is insufficient, I'm going to reject choices A and B. And with this, then let's go into statement 2. Okay, here is statement 2. Let's read. During the past three weeks, exactly 15 books on history were borrowed from the library. Now, this is something and you'll understand this when you look at the notes as well. Look, you know that all of the books that were returned that day, they had been borrowed in the past three week period. That means if, you know, past three week period, 30 books were borrowed, suppose, then all of the returned books were from these 30 books only. The returned books on this day were not from any prior period, not from four weeks ago and so on. That is what we were given here. Now we are given that 15 history books exactly were borrowed in the past three weeks, which means that the return books that I am talking about can only have some or all of these 15 books. Well, either all 15 came back on this day or some people still did not return. Nowhere is it saying that all of the books borrowed in the past three weeks were returned on this day. What we are saying is all of the books returned had been borrowed in the past three weeks. So, what I know is that the return books here would be less than equal to 15. Okay, this is again just history books. Now, if return books only were less than equal to 15, then from these when I pick up 100, I cannot pick up 16 books because I don't even have that number, which means this number that I am picking up for history, this number is really less than equal to 15. And if it is less than equal to 15, it obviously is less than 20 and therefore I have a sure yes. This makes my second statement sufficient. So if you bring back your choice analysis, A and D were already out. And now statement 2 working means that your correct answer is choice B. So just see how nicely we had understood the question that when we were doing our statements, we did not need to go back to the passage. And everything began by us first reading this really, really carefully, understanding everything. So once you read it, you visualize it, you take your notes. And then once you own the data set so well, visualizing the approach was actually really, really simple that it's only those hundred we're talking about, the ones that will be picked up. And from among those, you want to see how many history books are there. This tree diagram makes it so clear. Okay, when exactly am I saying yes? When exactly am I saying no? And of course, a statement would be sufficient if it gives you a sure yes or a sure no, not a maybe. Then with this clear approach, we went into each statement and then each statement was very, very simple to analyze. We could very easily reject statement one because it was not talking about those hundred books. It went to everything in the library. But then statement two had a very clean connection. It, it connected the books returned that day with the books that were borrowed in the past three weeks. This is where we used the information that everything returned that day had been borrowed in the past three weeks. This helped us make a clear inference that really the number of history books was less than 20, which made statement two sufficient and be the correct answer. That's it. Just follow the process and you will never be stuck. Good luck.